Hello, welcome to Jason the Old Millennial. My name is Jason, speaking to you here in my basement in the great state of Kansas. And in this video, I am uh, starting my uh, top 20 favorite movies of the 1950s. I've been um, doing this uh, this last year, uh, going through each decade and picking out uh, top 20 favorite movies of that decade and doing five uh, per video, um, kind of talking a little bit about each one and why I like them so much and why I recommend anybody watching them. And uh, I started with the 2010s, uh, so I worked my down, way down all the way to the 1950s. Um, and I, I like when I get to these lower decades, there, there's a lot of hidden gems that I love to talk about and hopefully recommend anybody to watch. Because uh, a lot of times it's hard to watch movies that are older. Not only is it harder to get a hold of them, uh, but the older movies sometimes can be a little slower moved. Of course, it's a different era. Uh, a lot of people can see them, they're black and white, maybe. Uh, a lot of people see them as kind of more boring, maybe. Uh, but I think there's still some really great movies of the older decades um, like this. Of course, 1950s is a baby boom generation, year my parents were born. Uh, so we're talking way back when. No, no offense to my parents. Um, but yeah, some really great ones here. Um, say they still got some good musicals, some epic movies, um, some good uh, courtroom dramas, good uh, romantic comedies coming out of this era. It's a very family-friendly era, of course. Uh, we still got, you know, the Hayes Code, I believe. Uh, so there's no... Uh, the movies don't really pu uh, push the boundaries at all as far as, uh, you know, sex and violence and all that. But I, I enjoy those kind of movies, the good family-friendly movies. Uh, a lot of these movies, in fact, I grew up watching with my family as a kid and really enjoyed them. Anyway, so uh, let's start with number 20 on my list um, of the top 20 movies of the 1950s. And number 20 is a movie called Auntie Mame from 1958. This is a comedy <clears throat> starring uh, Rosalind Russell, who was uh, one of the great um, actresses of that period. Uh, I don't know if she even, she did comedy and she can do drama. Uh, definitely, and also, you know, considered one of the, you know, most beautiful women of that period. Um, and this is, to me, my favorite performance of hers. I mean, she is so good at the main character, Auntie Mame. Uh, Auntie Mame is this um, character who's kind of this rich socialite at the beginning of the movie, and she has to, she ends up having to take care of her nephew. Comes, uh, I don't know what happened to his parents, but she kind of becomes the guardian of her nephew. And the nephew kind of grew up in a very strict household, well, Mame is very loose uh, on the rules, and she's kind of very liberal-minded, I would say. Uh, she loves to party. She's always throwing parties, and she's kind of wacky. Anyways, and she's a great character, and I absolutely love the character. And it's what, what really makes this movie um, enjoyable for me is just watching Rosalind Russell as this character. She really is that character. I mean, I almost can't believe she's in other roles because this character seems much different than what I've seen her in other um, roles. But I believe she did this role maybe on uh, Broadway or something like that on stage, and then she got to do the movie. And so she's just perfect. She just she becomes the character. I mean, you don't even know it's Rosalind Russell. You're like, who is this? This just is Mame, Auntie Mame. Um, anyways, and it just follows uh, her kind of bringing up the nephew. And then... So it kind of takes over a period of time. They go through the Great Depression. Uh, and then at the end of the movie, um, her nephew is grown up. I think he's in college or something. And he's going to get married to this girl who comes from this rich, very, you know, uh, conservative, strict uh, parents um, that are also, like, racist, you find out. And so then she kind of doesn't want him to marry her because uh, she brought him up differently to be, you know, uh, not so strict-minded. Anyway, so it's, it's a good, last scene is very funny. Um, this big dinner scene that I really enjoy. So yeah, definitely recommend it as a good comedy from the 1950s, Anti-Mame. Number 19 is another comedy, one of my favorite comedies of this era, uh, from one of my favorite comedians. Um, it's called Rockabye Baby from 1958, and it uh, stars Jerry Lewis. Um, and I'm a big fan of Jerry Lewis movies from this period, 1950s, 1960s. I grew up watching a lot of Jerry Lewis movies as a kid. My parents must have had some VHS tapes that they taped uh, Jerry Lewis movies on, and I used to pop them in constantly and watch them. 
And this is probably my favorite. It's hard to say this or Who's Minding the Store is another Dre Lewis movie I really enjoy. Um, uh, I think that came out in the 60s. This one, definitely a favorite of his in the 50s era. Uh, where it's kind of a, you know, obviously it's very goofy. Jerry Lewis is all about physical comedy, falling down, Pratt Falls, uh, doing funny voices, uh, doing just these crazy scenes where everything's going wrong. And he has just a great facial expressions when something goes wrong, uh, which makes the what makes it so funny. Um, in this one, he uh, ends up taking care of three babies that belong to this actress that he was in love with when he was a kid and he'll do anything for her and so she gets pregnant and has three kids but she doesn't want to tell the, the press so she gets gives the babies to him to take care of anyway so it's all comedies around him taking care of these three babies these triplets um and also he in love with this girl anyways and just a lot of stuff comes about he's this other girl who's a sister is in love with him and but he likes the other anyway so there's this not a love triangle but uh this other girl trying to get him to fall in love with her and actually really funny some really good scenes there and yeah it's just jerry lewis at his best at, at comedy at, at pratt falls and so forth and getting situations where he ends up destroying stuff and and um uh very funny stuff um I enjoyed the, and there's some musical, it's also a musical, and there's some musical moments where he breaks out into a song, and I actually quite enjoyed the music that he sings. Uh, the whole movie begins with him uh, just singing to the camera the title song, Rocket by Baby, and I just really enjoy that. It just gives you this, I don't know, old feel that I enjoy, you know, this old nostalgia in me, even though I was born way after the 50s. I still got some nostalgia for these 50s movies. Anyway, so I enjoy that a lot. And Dre Lewis has the best... Um, uh, surprise take, I don't know how to say it, where you give him information and shocking information. And some of Jerry Lewis is so good at just taking the information and not, it's like his brain doesn't realize the information shocking at first. It takes him about five seconds of him getting the information going, oh, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden the information finally clicks in his brain what, what was said. And then he goes, Ooh, and he does, like, you know, this crazy face. And it's absolutely hilarious. Anyways, and that's my opinion. Uh, so that's Rock by Baby, number 19. Number 18 is Serrano de Bergerac. Came out in 1950, starring Jose Ferrer, Ferrar as the main character. Obviously, Serrano de Bergerac is this very famous uh, French uh, story of a guy who has a large nose, a normally large nose, long nose. And, but he's also uh, very good with a sword. He's like the captain of some troops um, in the army, whatever, French army or something like that. And he's also a very good poet. You know, he's very poetic. Uh, but he can't get, you know, girls to fall in love with him because he has that long nose. Everything else is great except for that nose kind of ruins everything for him. Um, it's a great character. And uh, Jose Fer is so great at the, this character. He um, did this uh, as a play. It's a famous play. Um and he did it on Broadway, and it was huge. And then he did this movie, and he won the Oscar for Best Actor for this role in 1950. So obviously, uh, it was just he was just tailor made for this role, and he does such a great job. He's not a really well known name, Jose Ferrer. He was pretty big in this period in the 1950s. Uh, this being probably the biggest role for him for sure, because he won the Oscar and everything. But uh, very excellent here, and it's a great story. I love the the whole story of, you know. Him. He's in love with this girl, but he can't tell her. Uh, and then she's in love with this other guy named Christian, and but he's not poetic, so <clears throat> he writes poems for him to give to her to make her fall in love with him, even though he to him she's really falling in love with him. Uh, but he's kind of living vicariously through Christian. And, yeah, just a really good story. And there's a really nice fight scene in there where he gets uh, kind of ambushed. Uh, in the streets, and he has to fight like several guys with swords, and actually a pretty good fight scene um, that I enjoy quite a bit. And just the performance overall is just so good. It really makes this, and it's been done several times. Um, There's a 1990 version with Gerard Depardieu playing the character, um, which is, a, I haven't seen that version, but I know that was kind of a big version. And there's a, mu a musical coming out this either this month or next month called Sereno, starring Peter Dinklage as the main character. Instead of having a big nose, he's a little person, 
and I'm quite uh, excited. I've been listening to the soundtrack actually quite a lot, and I'm enjoying the music that I'm listening to on Spotify. So I'm really looking. It's like my most looked forward to movie of this year probably right now is Sereno. So I'm pretty excited to go see that. Hopefully, whenever it comes out. So that's number 18, Sereno de Bergiac. Number 17, another classic comedy, Father of the Bride, came out in 1950, starring Spencer Tracy um, as the father and the bride played by Elizabeth Taylor, uh, kind of young Elizabeth Taylor. I looked her up, she was around 17, 18 years old around this part, around this point. Uh, really starting to become a big actress, of course. She would um, go on to be even huger in the 60s, uh, <clears throat> winning two Oscars. And so young Elizabeth Taylor, so good. Um, you know, I think one of the most pretty actresses, beautiful actresses we ever had, and a very good actress. Um, of course, Spencer Tracy, so good. He's so great in this role. Um, more of a comedy role for him. Uh, but it's a, it's a great, you know, movie about, you know, the father seeing uh, his old daughter getting married and having to, and being the father. Uh, it's sad, you know, having to see his daughter grow up and leave. But also... As a father, you have to like pay for the wedding, so a lot of the comedy comes through him trying to figure out how to pay for this wedding, this really huge wedding, and organizing it, you know, and all the comedy comes about that. Yeah, it's just a great comedy. Of course, it got remade with Stephen Martin in the 1990s, which was a pretty good remake also. Um, I haven't seen either one actually in a little while, so it'd be interesting to watch both of them, see which one's better. Both are pretty good, but I mean, right now I'd say this is maybe the better one just because it's the original very classic anyway. So I got Father Bride number 17. Um, and then the last movie I'm going to talk about in this video is number 16 on my list is The African Queen. came out in 1951 uh, starring Humphrey Bogart and Catherine Hepburn and directed by the great John Huston. Um, another kind of mixture of comedy and drama I would say. Um, what makes this movie so great of course is the two leads. I mean two uh, great leads Humphrey Bogart and Catherine Hepburn. And the two characters have a lot of great chemistry, and that really makes the movie interesting because most of the movie is just them two on a boat. It's pretty much a whole movie. Um, it's, the movie takes place in Africa. Catherine Hepburn plays a missionary, and uh, Humphrey Bogart is like this alcoholic who um, has this ship that he calls African Queen, and he runs goods and sells goods with, uh, um, I think, a lot of alcohol. He sells a lot of alcohol, I think, using the boat as um, transportation. Um, that's how he makes his money. And it's around World War I era. Anyways, and so this village uh, gets ransacked and everybody gets killed basically except for Catherine Hepburn survives. And so uh, she gets on this uh, African queen ship with uh, Humphrey Bogart and he has to take her down this river, but there's like a German boat that's in the way that they have to get past. And so they're trying to figure out how to get past this uh, German boat and uh, get across uh, to another country, I think maybe I can't remember, but they're trying. To, it's basically a traveling show on boat, and these two, and they're of course drastically different because Catherine Hepburn's a missionary; she's very strict, anti-alcohol. And then you got Humphrey Bogart, who's kind of uh, you know he's very, uh, I want to say you know he's got stubble. He's you know not really good with the lady. I don't know. He's kind of a rough character. And he like loves to drink, and so there's this back and forth about you know drinking and stuff like that. Is it a sin and all this? And uh, Alfred Bogart gives a great performance, wins the Oscar for Best Actor for 1951. Um, so one of his best performances. And Catherine Hepburn's always great in just about everything she does in this period. I mean, you couldn't think of two bigger actor actresses of this period, and uh, that's what really makes this movie. And like I said, it has some good good comedy in there with the two. Uh, you know, some nice drama. There's some thrills in there, them going down this river and some, you know, bad waters and, of course, trying to get around this German uh, boat that might, you know, blow them up. Anyway, so, but yeah, definitely a classic and definitely uh, one of the best of this uh, period. Um, I recommend The African Queen at number 16 on my list. So that's uh, 20 through 16 on my list of 20 favorite movies of 1950. So uh, please feel free to comment if you have watched these movies, what you think about these movies. Uh, where you, if they would be on your list at all, or just tell me what your, some of your favorite movies of the 1950s are. I'd love to see that. Anyways, and thank you for watching the video and liking it, and thank you to all the subscribers for supporting the channel. I really appreciate y'all, so have a nice day.